jump in, man. Finishing off what is it? Aye, the people aye. can learn play.
محمد وآل محمد سلوات مالي مرتزا ناوي يكون شو السام اكسرسايز السلام عليكم walking is the best exercise that you can do. But the latest report says that brisk walking for 10 minutes only, as if you are running, is equal to half an hour, one hour. It's very important. Unless you do brisk walking, walking is very good. But if you are to do, as I said again last time, and I repeat again this time, by all means, go, go for a walk. But if you are to do breathing exercise, by the time you come back, you'll not be able to do breathing exercise now because you're already tired. You always start with the breathing exercise. And then the reason why I did not sort of last time, what I did was to run on the spot or to walk on the spot. That is warm up. So I would suggest personally, if you want to go for a walk, by all means. But if you are not tired, Alhamdulillah, you can still continue with the breathing exercise. All right, let us start with Anulom Vilom, which is a direct and reverse respiration. So close your nostril on the right. All right. Breathe in forcefully, deep breathing. Now, now what you do, block this nostril on the left and release here. Again, breathe, now breathe in from this, from the left here, from this side. Now, close this nostril, breathe out. Let's see how I do it. <laughs> breathe in, breathe out. Then breathe in here and then breathe out there. Now, then we do kap kapal bati. Kapal bati is you put your tummy inside and outside up. See how I do it. Down, please. So, Anulom Vilom is a very good exercise for those people who are suffering from heart problem. It has been proven actually that, uh, especially on Jain, I think that I've, I've been trying and I find a great improvement myself. You see, Anulom Vilom, which I have done. Now, Kapal Bhati is good for you throw out tex toxins, good for the liver, good for the kidney. Now, the last one that I'll be doing is called Bumblebee. You hum like a bee. So what you do, just see how I do it. Just do it. Now blow, close your e to both ears, you see? Now breathe, breathe in and then hum. <laughs> mm. Again.
Now this exercise is very good for those people who are suffering from sinus <coughs> problem, you see. Now we do another, I'll introduce another type of exercise. You breathe in and breathe out with the first lips from here. See how I do it. Ra raised right up to the end. Now, this other type of uh, breathing exercise, which is good for relaxation. Don't breathe out from the mouth. Breathe in from the nose, breathe out from the nose as well. Now, before you go to bed, those people who suffer from insomnia, they can't sleep. And this, at any time, for anxiety especially, is called four, seven, eight. Breathe in at the count at the second, four seconds. Breathe in. Hold for seven seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then. One, just four, first four, three, four, then hold for seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then breathe out eight, at the count of eight. <coughs> do only four, don't do more than four. And especially when it comes to holding for seven, if you can't, just hold for four because you can feel giddy, all right? Now, if we could all stand up, we do the neck exercise. <coughs> Turn right. Slowly, come back here, then left. Again, right, come back straight, and then left. Now look up, and then down. Up, and then down. And then do the way the sun is do after the prayers. Don't turn because you can get you can feel giddy. All right, and then like this. All right. Now this is the neck exercise, and let's do some uh, warm up exercise as well. Huh? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You can do reverse because of the time. I'm not going to do it now. Now do it this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Do it the other way as well, you see? Okay. This <coughs> way. Right. Now, if you could hold the chair. Push your, push your toe up and then down, up and then down, up and then down. Push your toe up, one, down. This is good for the balance, you see? All right. Now, now push your heels. 
I did the wrong way. Now do the tip to tip toe. What? Because you can't just. All right. All right, now see what I do. Go that way, this way, that way. Right, now do this. Now hold the chair, raise your, and let me see, hold on to the chair and bring one leg slightly backwards, bend your knee and lift your foot off the floor. This is good for the balance. Lift your foot off the floor. Remain there for a few seconds. Now do, do, do the same thing on the other leg. All right. So do this few times every day, OK? But this is good also for the balances. Now, stand holding onto the support. Bend one knee and uh, take hold of the ankle. See how I do it. Now see, ma make sure that you, you should feel some uh, tension on your, on your thigh, see? All right? Do, do again on the other one. All right, now stretch your, this leg, stretch here, at the back, right, stretch, all right. And bend this, bend the other leg, come forward, you should feel tension on your calf here. Can you feel it? Yes. Uh, bend forward, uh-huh. So you are exercising this muscle, all right. Now bend further forward, bend further forward, and raise your toe. You, you should you should feel some tension here on the on the and the ankle. What do you call this? Yeah. Okay. All right. Then do do the other one. Stretch the left leg, bend the right leg, go forward, and then and, and bend a little bit so that you, you, you exercise this part as well. Now, when, you, when this is strong, when that, that is strong, then you are saving that as well, which is very good. Now, I'm not going to ask you to do this, but I've read some in one of the books. If you do this five minutes twice a day, it is as if you are running for one hour. Let's see what I do. But, but go down and then go. Then a belly straight. Now this should tire you out. You see, this is one of those uh, exercises that really makes you tired. So and when you start doing the uh, cardiovascular exercise, which is very very important more than any other exercise, is to try and run on the spot, and then do that. Do this every day, because you need to have your breath, uh, sort of go, go out of, a little bit uh, out of breath every day, which is very important for the, for the heart and for the lungs. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, we've got some of these exercise mutazas shown at Brother Mutaza, um, point out here. Yeah. If anybody's interested, please, um, we only got a few. Thank you.
You can take a photo of it in your mobile and it can. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Please say Fatiha for all of our Romain. Al Fatiha. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki yawm al-Din. Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'inu ihdina sirat al-mustakim sirat al-lazina an'amta alihim ghayri al-maghubu'i alihim al-dhalin. Allah masalli ala. Hazir Mehfid, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Surah Al-Haqqa, Surah 69 from verse number 9, uh, from number 10, inshallah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فصوا رسول ربهم فأخذهم أخذة رابية إن لما تقل ما أحملناكم في الجارية لنجعلها لكم تذكرة وتأيها أذون وائية فإذا نفخ في سور نفخة واحدة وهملت الأرض والجبال فدكت دكة واحدة فيومئذ وكأت الواقعة وانشكت السماء في يومئذ وحيا صدق الله العلي العظيم Some surahs in the Holy Quran not that they are one is better than the other but some surahs tend to grab you there is so much that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to tell us in certain surahs it's just like poetry which comes out from the Almighty and when you look into the surahs, the way it is laid out, the way the foundation is, the way the explanation is, it is capturing one's imagination to be honest. Now, three, four weeks ago when I was doing the introduction uh, of, the, of, the, of the Quran, this was the same surah, Al-Waqiyah, that I had touched upon. I'm sure that you... Al uh, uh, al -haqqa. That's why you got the Malim always in front of me. <laughs> it, it shows you the depth. It is a surah which has got the intricacies of warning, but at the same time of good tidings. If you look at the way it has been put forward to us in Tanzil, it is number 78. The revelation, the, uh, the, the revelation came on number 78, but it is number 69 in the way that the Quran has been compiled. 
I asked the Mominin here a question some time ago, twice, and I said that I will indulge in the answer when I come back to the surah. As you know, this surah is about the day of Qayyama, on the day of judgment. It gives us the warnings that this is exactly what's going to happen, how the earth is going to be fana, how the mountains will be crushed, how every layer of the skies, the seven skies, will be completely destroyed, and how then Allah will reveal his arsh being carried by the eight malaikas. Because now we are coming towards that particular day of judgment. So this surah gives you a lot of insight, a lot of information about that day, the waqiyah. So I asked the question that if you were to stand at the middle of the earth and dig a hole, right? Dig a hole to the core of the earth, which is the middle of the earth, and you jump. How long do you think that journey of you falling from the edge of the earth to the core of the earth would be? Think about if you're on a cycle. We all, as a youngster, used to ride a bicycle, and all of us have fallen from a bicycle. All of us have you know, stood on a chair and fallen from the chair, right? We have fallen in our life. And how, does it, how long does it take? Two, three, four, five, six seconds to fall from the bicycle, from the chair, you know? But how long does it take you to fall from the edge of the earth to the middle of the earth? Did anybody try and find an answer on that? Dr. Saab? Eh? Try. Google it. It takes 44 minutes. Okay? I've got the calculation here if you are interested. And it's quite interesting. The acceleration of gravity, because everything is gravity, is 9.8 meters per second square. And the radius of the Earth is 6.378 million meters. That means that if you would fall through the entire Earth in only 42 minutes. The me good so? The how many? Good job. The hours are 42 minutes. Mental is. See, I'm trying to put Gujarati here. <laughs> but then... <laughs> okay, so, so... So we see that it takes 42 minutes for a person to fall. Fast forward to the day of Kayama. And we were talking about Surya Mulk, which we covered in one of the talks. And ayah number eight says, almost bursting for fury, whenever a group is cast into it, its keeper shall ask them, was there not a warner? That's where work. So what is saying here in this ayah, that those people who were heedless, because this al uh, Hakka is telling about the day of Qayyamad, those people who are hitless, the Qom of Samut, for example, they are now being thrown into the hellfire. 42 minutes to fall from the edge of the earth to the core of the earth. How long is the journey from the edge of the hell to the bottom of the hell? Any guess, just, just one guess, any, any one guess. Now, for the adab that awaits the hypocrites, now. that is asfad as uh. it is it describes that uh, place that Shimo, that Shimo, yeah. that they held the help it. It is bottomless. Now, and it's a bottomless. Yes, so you can imagine. You can imagine that is the way. The one that who is going to get to the deepest depth of the fire, which is bottomless, is the hypocrite asfad as safili. Mashallah. Yeah. But then we've got seven levels of hell. So if we've got seven levels of hell, just as Kainat has got seven different levels, you know that there is one level, then you go to the second level. I'm talking of the first level. A 
according to the hadith authenticated by the imams it is one whole year of falling oh. can you imagine so the keeper of the hell tells those people were you not warned wasn't there a Bashirun, a Nazirun who came to you and warned you and you chose to ignore falling for one year into the depths of hell Ya Allah may we, we are the lovers of Halal Bayt. And that is, inshallah, going to save us to an extent. But there are some things we do, may Allah not put us in the first level. Falling for one year, you can imagine. Now, the beauty about this once, one, one ayah is that the fifth Imam says that anybody who was to recite this surah, either in his nawafil or wajibat, often the day of Qiyamah will be just like flowers for him. Can you imagine? Why? Because there is this ayah here. I don't have time, you know. <laughs> it's, it refers to Imam Ali. It says over here, and Malim knows this very well, that by listening to this surah with intense intensity, you listen, Samir, it increases the love towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much that automatically your heart gets soft and towards that power which we all are seeking to be on the day of Qiyamah. And the fifth Imam says that this surah is mainly on Imam Ali and Muawiyah. And in this number 12, he says the person that Rasulullah refers to being totally listening to the ayahs of the Quran, understanding, appreciating, loving it, is none of the Ali ibn Abi Talib Yeah. 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 The idea for us, for me here to do is not to go into the translations, but to give you an oversight of what a surah actually stands for. And in time, inshallah, if you were to indulge into it more deeply, it will benefit. It's not a story. It is not a pastime, but a truth. Hakka. Allah says, al Hakka. Complete, complete, complete. So let us be from that group that we have in our hearts the love of Ahl Bayt, the Quran, and the understanding. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Shukran. Um, well, we now welcome Brother Azad Hansraj to come here and address us. I'll also request Brother Azad to um, introduce himself because most of us don't know him very well, mm. so he will introduce himself. Please. <coughs> May I sit down? Yes, please, please sit down. Asalaamu As Alaikum. Before I introduce myself, I would like to recite a surah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Kullu ahad, Allahu samad. لم يدن ولم يكن له كفوا. My name, my name is Azad Ali Muhammad Ali Hansraj, and I'm basically basically from Soroti and Mbale in Uganda. But I was born in Mombasa because my mother was daughter of Abdul Husain Nur Muhammad of Mombasa. Sultan Nun Muhammad who lives here is my mama. So, and a big introduction would be that I'm married to a lady called Selma, who is a granddaughter of a person who made us all Shia. That is Haji Naji, or Bhavnagar. Kazim Kausari is my father-in-law. Your father-in-law? Yes. You knew him. Yeah, very well. So Son this. Of, uh, Haji Naji. Haji Naji. Yes. Of course, they, they doesn't give you a benefit. 
unless you are proper yourself, that's how it is. But this is uh, my little history. So, uh, the topic I have chosen basically, my topic is basically for people who live in UK, in Europe rather, and my point of view is for future, look east. Now, this is how I argue this. You see, basically, uh, our Gujarati and Kachi background, Kachi was a small part of Gujarat, but uh, the history goes that in our 14th century, a man called Ahmad Shah established a Muslim rule in Gujarat, which lasted for about 400 years. And a lot of Muslims were created there. But then eventually, the Marathas came over in 18th century, and they took over, and 70% 70, 70 of the population became Hindus, and they were mostly doing business in what we call, we call it now wari, agriculture business. Then, a lot of people like my grandfather, in 1975 onwards, they decided to migrate to Africa. Like my grandfather is there just before start of 19th century and started living there. But in Africa, you must remember that uh, first there was a, a viral, recent virus we had here, and a lot of people died there. In fact, one of my uncles passed away there. Then there was First World War. And after a few years later, there was Second World War. So those people who were living there had a very tough time. And poverty was very common. But they, were, they all had small shops and a little bit of agriculture. And they were having a very hard life working for the railways and doing a very tough job. My father, who passed away recently, was when he passed, he was 85, but in, well, he was born in 1923 in, uh, in Soroti. Now, when my father was about 13, 14 years old, my grandfather decided to send him to Mombasa for education. So he was asked to travel by train to go to Mombasa and he went and lived with family of Abdul Hussainur Muhammad. That's how I came in and that's how my father got married in their family as well. But my father uh, was a very smart guy. He went to Alidina High School and he learned Arabic from a local Arab there. And he recited so brilliantly that you could not recognize who he was reciting. So the religious flavor came into our family. By the time he finished metric, my grandfather called him back and he, was, he went to Soroti. And uh, when he went there, he was approached by the British Army to be taken for war. But my grandfather told them that I got only one son at the moment. One has died, so they allowed him to stay. So they waited till when the war ended, my father sought out, thought of a business by which he used to get medications from India and pack his own brand. And they started making money, you see. We became slightly rich. He then decided that uh, my, by, the ten time, by, by that time, my grandfather had eight children four boys and four girls together. 
So he told my grandfather that now that the war is over, a lot of construction is going to take place in Uganda. So let me fly to England. And Germany as well, because the war is over, so I can get agencies for wheelbarrows, spades, and agricultural equipment, so we can sell it and make business here. So he went to Germany, came in 1954 to London, and he told me when I went to Scotland, all the little boys will come and touch my skin and say, how come you are so brown? <laughs> all of us are white. So he said, I had a tough time explaining to them. But he managed to get good agencies, staff came there, and we became very rich. Now I'm telling you this, because from Gujarat to coming to Uganda, they all together spent a good time until 50, 1950, or 1960 rather. And my grandfather became a millionaire. He had so much money, all the boys had four houses, they had lovely cars, they had a hell of a life, you know. They were very rich, and the things were going very nice. My father shifted to Mbale, he became mayor of Mbale. Uh, a, a special princess from England had come there, shook hands with him, they all fought, I got all photographs for that. And my father converted 13,000 Africans into Muslims. He was the chief of Muslim association. If you go into Jamaat directory, you'll find his name there, and you'll, you'll see that. My father was an excellent tennis player, uh, what you call a man of all seasons, from religions to everything, you know. But then uh, he started going into politics. As soon as Uganda got independence, he stood up for the election. When he stood up for the election, he lost the election. Because Aga Khan is there, were Muslims. When my father was a, he used to smoke 80 cigarettes a day for almost 70 years of his life. You cannot ask him to stop smoking, because he said, no, never tell me not to smoke. So he was invited because he was a, chairman, he was a mayor by the Ahanis to come and sit with the uh, uh, head of Ahanis who had come there to visit. And he sat on the head table, being a smoker, he smoked. So a guy took a photograph there, because he knew my father was going to stand in election, and he published, Ke Abra Imam Ne Same, Abhaya Sigaret Pidi. The balancing fact was the Aga Khan is with the balance. Ya Hindu no vote up, ya Muslim no up. Say, look, I'm with the op thing, ya Hindu mate. Patel of Totia. So my father lost the election. Then he told my grandfather, now this is Africa, I must look towards East. So he took a flight and went to Hong Kong, went to India. He had an opportunity to meet Mr. Nehru there. He Jawaharlal Nehru ne mulakat kari ani sathe. He looked around the economy, independent Sikhism, and then he went to Pakistan. When he arrived in Pakistan, it was 60s. General Ayub was the president, and the opportunities were ample. You could put a plant, they'll give you special loans. Anything would be good for manufacturing sector as well as business. So he went and decided to buy uh, about three acres of plot in industrial area so that he and his family can come here. He went back to Uganda and he told my uh, his father that now the days are no, not looking good to me here. This was about 1963-64. I want to go to Pakistan and make investment. So we look towards east and we go and settle there. 
my grandfather told me, we come from there only. India and Pakistan was the same one day. But he said, changing times, times change. But my uncles, Shall I continue? Please. So None of them wanted to go to Pakistan, but my father insisted and he went to Pakistan in 1963 and he's looking after the projects. He decided that this is the time, best time to buy land and invest. So he looked around and found out that a lot of fruits in Pakistan were wasted because they could not export it. So he decided to make a cold storage there, one in one place. Then he looked around and he found that a lot of auto space parts trucks were coming in and not many industry were there, they were all imported from England. So he decided to buy another piece of land to, um, to establish a filter manufacturing plant. She studied there, he could find engineers there as well. And thirdly, he said a lot of pharmaceuticals will be needed, so he decided to buy a aluminum and rubber caps, which are which you put on the injection bottles. So three projects were lined up. He came back, and in 1965, he, he asked me and the family to move to Pakistan. None of my uncles agreed with him, but we moved by ship Karanja to Mumbai, to Karachi. And he told me, you have done your O levels. I have a flight booked for you in September. You go to England and become an engineer. No choice. You go and study and do that. So I flew in 1965 to London. Mohsin Dharamsi was supposed to be my guardian because my mother and his mother were very good friends in Karachi. Mohsin Dharamsi didn't come to, uh, come to the airport. And I was lost alone, you know, there. What to do, I didn't know. So I asked somebody, he says, go to Victoria Terminal and find some uh, hotel and stay and then call this guy up because the telephones are already common in those days. It was so cold also, you know, although I came in September. So I went and called him up. He said, oh, I am to I'll come pick you up tomorrow. So the next day, he came and picked me up. In the daytime, I used to walk on Oxford Street. There was an India tea stall, only restaurant there, which I could have a cup of tea and things like that. So this is my background, and I did my A-levels in London, in Chelsea, because my father was a rich man, so he put me in a private school. Then I cleared that and I went to Brighton College of Technology and I did my engineering. And in 1971, I went, went to, I first went to Uganda and then I went to Pakistan. So my uncles told me, hey, when you get there, you are, you are quite 23 now, you tell your father, look at the lifestyle we have here. All of us have Mercedes Benz. We move around very efficiently. We go to Kampala all the time from Soroti. Hospitals are good. Everything is fine. So although he's invested in our name, all the four brothers are partners, but we will not come there. I said, all right, I'll give you a message. So I went and told my father, and it so happened. This is, I'm talking about 1972, January. In 1972, October, Idi Amin shook the Uganda and all the people were supposed to move out. So all my uncles came to Pakistan and only one of them came to London. All two came there 
my grandmother, my fa grandfather had passed away, my grandmother also came. And she was a very wise woman. She said, Muhammad Ali, you had a right solution. Because I have been to Mefle Khurasan, and I have seen how they pray here. So this place is the right place for us. But my uncles and their children were too keen to come to UK. So by that time they came, we had all the three plants working. And I was engineering, I was an engineer in the filter manufacturing plant, which belonged to our family. My two uncles were looking after cold storage. We started having all sorts of fruits coming in, you know, for storage. Business was good. And the middle one who came to England, he said, you sell it off and give me the money. Because I will invest in uh, London. With which, that money he could only buy a, a corner shop in a tube station. But he said, I want to live here. So one day I asked him, what was the main reason you decided to live here? He said, pension. I said, pension? He said, I knew that you get pension in England because if your children don't behave and you are stuck when you are old, the only thing which attracts you is pension and national health service. This is the two things that attracts you. So I want to spend my life here. Mm -hmm. So he decided to spend his life here. And the other two brothers also said, we don't enjoy Pakistan, so they left and they went away. So we sold off, we just kept a filter plant and I was running it. And I became a good engineer. I went to US, study American locomotives. And Pakistan, a lot of American locomotives for the last 40 years, I, s I am the only supplier who gives these uh, filters to Americans. And they were very happy. I exported some filters to Dubai, and we become very well off there, I must tell you that. But in the 70s, Bhutto came, and Bhutto was a socialist. So he started nationalizing all the plants and everything. But our plant was not in that category at that moment. By the time he was thrown out by Ziaulak, and there was a changing of government, tiny years, people sitting outside England. My uncle used to tell me, the country is going to hell. You people are staying there. He says, we don't feel it there. But from outside, you will feel like that. So in 19, uh, about year 2000, uh, um, uh, a president came and he took over and he made the economy very strong. And things were turning better, then Nawaz Sharif came, and nowadays what do you hear, hue and cry, is nothing. This happens once in a while. Imran Khan wanted to stay there, and the other people, old, the older one, Nawaz Sharif people want to come, so they were tussled. So this will last for about six months, and again be regularized. So this is how it is, and Pakistan is a country which uh, has the biggest Jamaat in Karachi of about 42,000 people. It, is a, it has a very good hospital managed by Khojas. Only Khoja, Khoja is actually not Hindustani, there are many. And it is a school which has more than 2,500 2, students. They are going to build a university now and they are doing on their own because Habib group is also helping. A lot of rich people are there who are building it up. So that is a place where uh, you would say that if you go and spend your life there, the politics is bad, but the life is good. For example, if you decide to go to Islamabad, lovely place, beautiful country, mountains, regions, you would not believe how beautiful it is. Lahore, very pretty, except for Karachi, we become very multiracial, so there is some conflicts on and off, and that's also new, uh, highlighted in the newspaper. But otherwise, a wonderful country to live in. My, uh, one of the reasons I am speaking to you guys is basically that I look at the history, then I thought that uh, from Gujarat to Africa, and Uganda taking place. 
after which I think most, some of the Kenyans and Tanzanians have also come here, is almost 70 years. And from 1972 to present day is about 50 years, right? So somehow I feel that people like us who belong to East Africa are migrants, Sorry? are migrants. They spend about half a century somewhere and some, something, something goes wrong and they decided to move out. So we Gujarat, we Gujarati. Aji Naji jo any family of my wedding kadithi, tia bhiene, any press ni alakai wari na kiti, because he was spitting too much Ishnashirism. So, avi na apane ya religious problem thai, ya color problem thai. So, my idea of putting in your mind, because you are of a upper age limit, to tell your children and you to tell your grandchildren, that if at all things go bad in future, you look east. Because now what has happened, for example, in Ukraine things have happened, you know. And Americans have their own way of running their life. So east, when I say east, I basically mean country like Malaysia, uh, Dubai, India and Pakistan, these four countries. India is a BJP government which is not welcoming Muslims. Malaysia does not allow Shia religion. Can't practice Shia there. It's banned there. Dubai is a Middle East country for the rich, not for the middle class. Only one choice you have is Pakistan, which is shaky in the sense that when there is election time or anything goes wrong, there is problem. But otherwise, it's very peaceful. Uh, my message to you guys are that uh, as long as you are fit and you are a grandfather, if you have an uh, older grandson in, in over 18 or over 20, 25, you go for a one-week visit to Pakistan. Take a flight direct to Islamabad, spend two or three days, four days in Islamabad, look at the beauty of your, you see a lot of Imamaras there, lovely place to visit. Mountains, go in the mountain and see tourism there. A lot of people are opening hotels there and things like that. Then you, by about three hours drive to Lahore, lovely place, green grass, everything, very lovely. Everything is beautiful there except in summertime, don't go in the summer. You go from November to March, five months. Is it that? Then you make a short visit to Karachi because Karachi has a little bit of reputation, but 40,000 Shnachiris are living there. All Khojas, Gujarati speaking, like you people. Go there and meet them. Go to Mefile Khurasan. Go and visit the school. And most of all, as for the ayat, I think I have read in Quran, the charity you leave by writing checks here and by sending emails is nothing compared to when you go and give it by your hand to the man who receives it. Pakistan, there are a lot of establishments. I know four or five of them. They will take you to a, a village in Sindh, which is not very far, not very far from Karachi. And you will see, like I have donated a mosque in Sindh. My Sultan Nur Muhammad has donated a veil in the name of his wife. So you give, you give money to those people, they'll be supervised by a Khoja. And the man, you people also know, his name is Altaf Bojani, his brother of Hamid Bojani who was killed in Mefile Mutaza incident. Very nice man, he take you around, and he give you a choice, invest in madrasa, water well, or mosque, and orphanage. If you are rich, you go to Habib group, they have establishments, 
ولبانے یا باس اسکول اور اے تھاؤزینڈ یتیم بچے آزاد دیا جائے یو ڈونیٹ دیئر وت یو ہینڈ اینڈ دین دیر از اے لیونگ کواٹرس فار گرلس ہو آر اورفنڈ دے لک آفٹر دیم ویری ویل دے ٹرین دیم دے ایجوکیٹ دیم اینڈ دے گیو اے جاب ان بینک اونلی سو دے اسٹارٹ ورکنگ ان دا بینک سو دا منی ول گیو ول لاسٹ سو لانگ اینڈ یو کین سی دا لیڈر کلائمبنگ اپ so main point being your grandson he will get a picture of the east nothing is going to happen in uk for a while nothing is going to happen kuda na kasta ke wo problem thai jaye ya to tumhari paas kya baat hota ke apne gujarat thi bhai ga africa africa thi aaye va ya ave apna rastan america to tumhe jai na sako south america jai sako આ મુસ્લિમ કન્ટ્રી છે આ શિયા કન્ટ્રી છે એટલા બધા શિયા છે એમાં વન થર્ડ ઓફ ધ પોપ્યુલેશન એ કોઈ તમને એન્ટી શિયા પર તમને કોઈ પ્રોબ્લેમ ના કરી શકે તમને અહીંયા લાગે કાંઈ થાય છે ભાઈ એવું કાંઈ હોતું નથી એમાં અમે તો જુલુસમાં જાય હજારો લાખો માણસ હોય તો રિલિજન ઇઝ ધેર યુ પે એજ્યુકેશન ઇઝ ધેર સો ટ્વેન્ટી યર્સ ડાઉન ધ રોડ વેન યુ નોટ હિયર ગાય વી રિમેમ્બર ધ બોય હોય સેન્ટ અપ દેર ઇઝ અ પ્લેસ I can take my children if I want in the future. Because it's interesting that you have to do all of this. So there will be a chance that this will happen. So in the end, I would say that the Indian people are very good. And they are very good. And the idea is to open your eyes if you need to or your family to go. Because here, I have seen one thing also. that you have grown up, your children have grown up, and your grandchildren have grown up, they have no difference between you. You have a child and you have a grandchild. There is a high qualification. The child has a lot of money. They have their own private life. I cannot imagine that I would not live with my father, and my son cannot imagine he will not live with me. But there is a possibility. તમારો ગ્રાન્ડ સન છે એ હાઈલો જાય કે આઈ વોન્ટ માય ઓન લાઈફ માય વે ઓફ લાઈફ હવે આ હેતુ છે કુરાનમાં કે તમારો બાપો બુડ્ડું થાય તો તમે એને રીપે કરો કે એને તને બચપનમાં જોયું છે અને એને મા બાપને ધ્યાન રાખો તો તમે ઓલ્ડ પીપલ હોમની જરૂર ના પડે અહીંયા એ બી એક એલિમેન્ટ છે એમાં કરવા માટે તો મારી રિક્વેસ્ટ છે કે તમે પાકિસ્તાનની જો ન્યૂઝ પેપરમાં છે એને મૂકી અને આ ઇલેક્શન પીરિયડ ડિસેમ્બર જાન્યુઆરી ખતમ થઈ જશે પછી તો ચાર વર્ષની ગવર્મેન્ટ આવે છે પ્રોબ્લેમ નથી હોતા ખાલી ઇલેક્શન ટાઈમમાં હોય છે તમે એક ટ્રીપ મારો સેફ આ જગા છે તમને ગાઈડન્સ જોઈએ તો હું તમને માણસનું નામ આપી દઈશ આપણી કોમ્યુનિટીમાં નામ આપી દઈશ બચ્ચાઓને દેખાડો ચેરિટી કેમ થાય એજ્યુકેશન કેમ થાય કેટલી મહેફૂલ છે અને કેટલા શિયા છે એમાં yeah we will never be under privileged so that is my reason i am mean, talking to you people after spending some time here for four or five i i i spam come here because unfortunately i would request you guys to pray for my wife and a parkinson thing you say so that is bad so i came for a treatment here but they said there is no treatment here so the prayers are the only way તમે દુઆ કરજો થેન્ક યુ ફોર થેન્ક યુ ફોર યોર ટાઈમ એન્ડ લિસ્ટિંગ મી આવર આઈ હોપ આઈ ટ્રાન્સફર સમથિંગ ટુ યુ શ્યોર સહી Time, but yeah, yeah. yeah. See, there's one question I have. Yes. India and Pakistan got independence at the same time, and they were in the same position from colonial times. Yet, India has developed into a world power, while Pakistan is on the verge of bankruptcy. Can you explain how this happened? Why did Pakistan not develop? 
uh, very simple reason is that initially when Pakistan separated from India, Pakistan uh, was a much smaller land than India. Now India, British had invested a lot of money in India, mostly in the regions in which Pakistan was not there. Pakistan was a low, was a, a raw land, and India, British gave them a lot of opportunities and facilities and engineering equipment and all that. They were well trained. Hindus being much larger population than Muslims. Most of the Kaidaism, there is Muhammad Ali Jinnah. One of the reasons he wanted Pakistan to be separate is that the Hindus will overcome and pa Muslims will be absolutely downgraded. So if you look at the history, from 1955 to 1970, Pakistan had a very high prospective years. People were much better off. The first 15 to 20 years were very good. Then Mr. Bhutto came, who was a socialist and a communist of my nature. Their five, 10 years period brought us down. But now, if you come to Pakistan, I will show you the, what, what prospects are there. Free trade with China, there is a road which brings a lot of powerhouses, power to Pakistan. And Pakistan at the moment is quite prosperous in the way that at the moment, if you invest for people with British pounds, they get a lot of rupees there. It is devalued in the sense that at the moment, this is the right time to invest. But I would rather say you wait for 10, 15 years and stability is going to be there. So Pakistan in the sense that uh, initially their problem with uh, learning lessons in the sense that India had uh, Mr. Nehru who took over, one man almost used to rule everything. Pakistan had different democracy natures, so we went down a little bit. But otherwise, if you come and visit to India and come and visit Pakistan, you'll see that pa Pakistan is a more prospered. The country looks bad from outside, but inside is quite good. Thank you very much, Nidhi. Okay. Is there a time? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now is your namaz time or No, namaz is just after one o'clock. Uh -huh. And we have ya some yasin and then uh, namaz okay. time. Yeah? Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. I, I promised uh, our brother from uh, in, uh, Canada, he wants to speak for about five minutes, and I promised him a slok. So. I was sorry, I forgot. I When I saw Muhammad, I remembered that when I came in 1965 to 72 in uh, England, there was one man, his, his father, Abhivalji, who made sure that we went to Madlises and he used to organize a lot of things. So I think he was one of the first men to start the momentum of Madlis, I remember that. Thank you so you must... Uh, <laughs> Welcome our brother from Canada. He just wants to speak for two minutes. Assalamu alaikum, brothers. I'll only take five minutes of your time. Two things I want to share with you, words of wisdom. The first one is, Struggle is the meaning of life. Victory or defeat is in the hands of God. But struggle by itself is man's duty and should be his joy. So that is one thing I wanted to share with you. The second thing is in Gujarati, and I'm sure most of you might have experienced this. Apra Gujarati ma kiesi hai 
કે મા બાપના મરવા પછી ઇન્સાનને ત્રણ વસ્તુ ભૂલી જવી પડે છે માની મમતા બાપના લાડકોડ અને ફરિયાદ કરવાનું સ્થાન સો ધીઝ વર ધ ટુ વર્ડ્સ ઓફ વિઝડમ આઈ વોન્ટ ટુ શેર વિથ યુ આઈ એમ સો હેપી દેટ એવરી ટાઈમ આઈ કમ ફ્રોમ એડમન્ટન અલબર્ટા ટુ લંડન ઇંગ્લન્ડ આઈ ફીલ સો હેપી ટુ કમ હિયર એવરી વેનસ્ડે એન્ડ મીટ માય મુસ્લિમ બ્રધર્સ I know so many people by face, some people by names. I know Dr. Rahim because we were on the same bus when we went for Hajj. I know Murtaza Laka because we listened to his, his Surah Yasin on the tip. I met a new brother today and his name is Murtaza Dala and he suggested that I should speak to you for five minutes. <coughs> Now, our brother here, Azad, who gave us a beautiful historical background about his family and the adventures of his father. I have only one question for him. Brother Azad, do you remember a young man from Kampala who came to study air levels in Mabale? And he stayed at your house for about two weeks and then he stayed as a paying guest with Muhammad Rajwali Khimji. Do you remember? Hussain Asariya, that's me. It's a small world, isn't it? <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Murabi Sahib, Mashkur, thank you very much. I go back to Marhum uh, Muhammad Taki, Nur Muhammad in Mombasa. Yes. Right? He was uh, your mama. And I'm in touch with his daughter in Pakistan every other day on Facebook. Uh, he actually proposed. He actually proposed in our family. But my mother chose my father. <laughs> And he was the... Um, paid secretary of the Jamaat and the Marumul Asghar. And see, you've met somebody after 60 years or so. A lot of people are not well. As Murabi said that he's here for his wife's treatment. The other Mu'mineens here whose family members suffer from the same illness. Let us pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that these people are granted shafa or at least an ease for themselves. Please let us join ourselves in setting up my YouTube five times with your permission. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Amma yujibu al-mustawra idha da'a wa yakshifu su. 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 Amma yujibu Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. With your mercy and blessing, bring shafa to those who are inflicted with various ill health and diseases. And may your tawfiq in our hearts to look after our beloved ones increase, inshallah. Uh, before I just do, I've got a few minutes. Um, I was reflecting to what Malim uh, Murtaza Bandali mentioned about the, 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 the pitless hell. Um, and I've just looked into some hadith. You know, when we get some negative news, bad news, our stomach sort of falls 
we feel so, Ya Allah, you know, we, the, the saying says, it was like bottomless pit. Or there is an affliction that when we are falling, it looks like it's years and unfathomable uh, fall. And Allah is giving us an analogy in this uh, verse that when he says that it's bottomless, it's the feeling that we have that is unending. So whether it is 45 minutes falling into the, to the core of the earth or falling into the pits of hell, whilst you are falling, you feel that uh, there is no end to it. You're falling, 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 falling. Um, Manim, please, if you don't mind. Raja, Raja, I promised you last time that you, you will recite Surah Yasin here. So I will, uh, please, you no, know, come. Because Murabi here said we must, we must get extra people to come and recite Yasin. And I want you to come. John, John, John. We have to get new people to recite, right? Thank you. Soma, are you on the Quran? You want kitab or this is fine? Should be okay. Uh, should be okay. Please, please, thank you. Thank you. Allah wa sallam ala Muhammad wa 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 ala إنا جعلنا في عناكهم أغلالا فهي إلى الأسكان فهم مقمحون وجعلنا من بين عيديهم صدا ومن خلفهم صدا فاغشيناهم فهم لا يبصرون وسواء عليهم عن غضهم عم لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون إنما تنذر من اتبع الذكر وخشى الرحمن بالغيب فبشره بمغفرة وأجر كريم إنا نحن نحي الموت ونكتب ما كدموا وآسالهم وكل شيء أحسيناه في إمام مبين وضرب لهم مثلا أصحاب الكذية إذ جاءها المرسلون إذ أرسلنا إليهم اثنين فكذبوهما فعززنا بسالس فقالوا إنا إليكم مرسلون قالوا ما أنتم إلا بشر مثلنا وما أنظل الرحمن من شيء إن عنتم إلا تكذبون قالوا ربنا يعلم إنا إليكم لمرسلون وما علينا إلا البلاغ المبين قالوا إنا تطيرنا بكم لئن لم تنتهوا لنرجمنكم ولا يمسنكم منا عذاب عليم قالوا طائركم معكم أئن ذكرتم بل عنتم قوم مصرفون وجاء من أكسى المدينة رجل يسعى قال يا قوم اتبعوا المرسلين اتبعوا من لا يسعلكم أجرا وهم مهتدون وما لي لعبد الذي فترني وإليه ترجعون أتخذ من دونه آلحة إن يردني الرحمن بذر لا تغن عني شفاعتهم شيئا ولا ينكزون إني, إني إذا لفي ظلال مبين إني آمنت بربكم فاسمعون قيل ادخل الجنة قال يا ليت قومي يعلمون بما غفر لربي وجعلني من المخرمين وما أنزلنا على قومه من بعده من جند من السماء وما كنا منزلين إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم خامدون يا حسرة على العباد ما يعطيهم من رسول إلا كانوا به يستهزئون ألم يروا كم أحلكنا قبلهم من القرون أنهم إليه لا يرجعون وإن كل لما جميع لدينا محزرون وآية لهم العرض الميتة أحييناها وأخرجنا منها حبا فمنه يأقلون وجعلنا فيها جنات من نخيل وعناب وفجرنا فيها من العيون ليعقلوا من سمره وما عملته أيديهم أفلا يشكرون سبحان الذي خلق العذواج كلها مما تنبت العذو من أنفسهم ومما لا يعلمون وآية لهم الليل نسلخ منهم هذا فإذا هم مسلمون 
والشمس تجري لمستقر لها ذلك تقدير العظيم العليم والكمر قدرناه منازل حتى عاد كالعرجون الكديم لا الشمس ينبغي لها أن تدرك الكمر ولا الليل سابق النهار وقل في فلك يسبحون وآية لهم أن عملنا زريتهم في الفلك المشحون وخلقنا لهم من مثله ما يركبون وإن نشأ نقرهم فلا صريخ لهم ولا هم ينقذون إلا رحمة منا ومتاعا إلى حين وإذا كيل لهم اتقوا ما بين أيديكم وما خلفكم لعلكم ترحمون وما تعتيهم من آية من آيات ربهم إلا كانوا أنها معرضين وإذا كيل لهم أنفقوا مما رزقوا الله قال الذين كفروا للذين آمنوا أنطعم من لو يشاء الله أطعم إن عنتم إلا في زلال مبين ويقولون متى هذا الوعد إن كنتم صادقين ما ينظرون إلا صيحة واحدة تأخذهم وهم يخصمون فلا يستطيعون توصية ولا إلى أحلهم يرجعون ونفك في السور فإذا هم من الأجداث إلى ربهم ينسلون قالوا يا ويلنا من بعثنا من مركدنا هذا ما وعد الرحمن وصدق المرسلون إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم جميع لدينا محزرون فاليوم لا تظلم نفس شيئا ولا تجزون إلا ما كنتم تعملون إن أصحاب الجنة اليوم في شغل فاكهون هم وعزواجهم في زلال على العرائك متقعون لهم فيها فاكهة ولهم ما يدعون سلام قولا من رب الرحيم وامتاز اليوم أيها المجرمون ألم أحد إليكم يا بني عادم على تعبد الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين وعن اعبدوني هذا صراط مستقيم ولقد أظل منكم جبلا كثيرا أفلم تكونوا تعكلون هذه جحنم التي كنتم توعدون إسلوح اليوم بما كنتم تكفرون اليوم نختم على أفوائهم وتكلمنا عيديهم وتشهد عرجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون ولو نشاء لتمسنا على أعينهم فاستبقوا الصراط فعنا يبصرون ولو نشاء لمسخناهم على مكانتهم فما استطاعوا مضيا ولا يرجعون ومن نعمره النقص في الخلق أفلا يعقلون وما علمناه الشعر وما ينبغي له إن هو إلا ذكر وقرآن مبين لنجر من كان حيا ويحك القول على الكافرين أولم يروا أنا خلقنا لهم مما عملت أيدينا أنعاما فهم لها مالكون وزللناها لهم فمنها رقوبهم ومنها يعقلون ولهم فيها منافع ومشارب أفلا يشكرون واتخذوا من دون الله آلهة لعلهم ينصرون لا يستطيعون نصرهم وهم لهم جند محزرون فلا يحظن كقولهم إنا نعلم ما يسرون وما يعلنون أولم يرى الإنسان وأنا خلقناه من نطفة فإذا هو خصيم مبين وزرب لنا مثلا ونسي خلقه قال من يحي العظام وهي رميم قل يحيح الذي أنشأها أول مرة وهو بكل خلق عليم للذي جعلكم من الشجر الأقزر نارا فإذا أنتم منه تؤكدون أوليس الذي خلق السماوات والعظ بكادر على أن يخلق مثلهم بلى وهو الخلاق العليم إنما عمره إذا عراض شيئا أن يكون له كن فيكون فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام المرسلين على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد سورة المباركة الفاتحة Just to remind everyone, um, the Harfil Sunday, um, we'll be leaving here. Those people who have registered their names, uh, with about 11 people so far, 
uh, we will be leave, we will be arriving here at 9:45 in the morning, and we will leave at 10 o'clock to go to Hellfield Center. Um, and that, that's um, definitely on, yeah. <laughs> and your names are there, so please try and be here by 9:45, so we can leave at 11. And inshallah, we will be back here by 12 o'clock after two. Um, can I ask Mutzabai to recite Yasin, please? Assalamu alaikum ya Rasulullah, Assalamu alaikum ya Habiballah, Assalamu alaikum ya Amir al Mu'minin wa Sayyid al Wasiyin, Assalamu alaikum ya Fatima al Zahra, Sayyidati Nisa al Alamin, Assalamu alaikum ya Hassan al Mujtaba. السلام عليك يا با عبد الله الحسين وعلى تسعة المعصومين من ذريته علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والحجة بن الحسن عجل الله فرجه وسهل الله مخرجه وظهوره ورحمة الله وبركاته اللهم كن لوليك الحجة بن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه وارضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين